Magazine of January 2nd, 1937, issue number 1996. At this time, Carmen Amaya, a great dancer who died in 1963, she had a 90-day sellout. If you went to buy tickets, you had to get tickets for three months from now. They were the biggest thing. Here's a picture of Rosario E. Antonio. They were part of Carmen Amaya's troupe. Later went on their own. And that's a picture from 1948 at the Teatro San Martin in Buenos Aires, 10 years after their debut as Los Chavillos de Sevilla. That's what they were known as in the uh, concert program for Carmen Amaya in 1937. This is from the book Antonio and the Spanish Dancing by Elsa Brunel Leschi, published by A and C Black, limited in 1958. Maria, I was also very young and my father liked the Spanish theater. Carmen Amaya came here to the Teatro Avenida. I remember very well, I was very young. I was only seven or eight years old and here came Los Chavillos. Los Chavalillos. And do you know what happened? There was a great clamor about them in Buenos Aires that from here they went to the United States. They ended up being Rosario e Antonio, Rosario and Antonio. Why, when they were growing up, they had been Los Chavalillos, the kids, but they had been the Los Chavalillos of the Carmen Amaya Company. It was important what happened here in Buenos Aires. At the same Hector, and the same thing happened to Segovia, Maria. Undoubtedly, because Segovia, when he came here the first time, didn't have worldly fame, but much less, since his performances in Buenos Aires, because the city had the reputation of a cultured public that understood music. It was so because there was the Asociación Wagneriana that my father was a founding member of that association. He said, I don't understand of anything of Wagner, but I would like to understand. Overall, there had been an increase in anything that was Fr everything that was French. The French companies came, the French artists, and all this was a resounding success. Buenos Aires was known as the Paris of South America. And here they were people who understood it. By that, there was the acceptance of the Argentine public, which wasn't a flock of turkeys, and that's the history. You can verify that Los Chavalillos left from right here for New York. They were kids that were 14 and 15 years old. When they grew up, they dropped the name Chavalillos and became Rosario E. Antonio. Made a lot of movies. There were greats of the... Sp and they were greats of the Spanish music, of the dance Sevillanas, and the rep repercussion of Carmen Amaya also influenced her. Ro speaking of Rosario, Carmen Amaya was an incredible dancer. You have to see the movies from the late 1930s. She could dance so fast. Hector, Segovia projected from here to Spain and later to other parts of the world. Can you assure that he bolted to the United States? Maria, I don't know if it was the United States, but Europe, yes, very much so. Afterward, I was in contact with Segovia a whole lot because, as I say, as soon as he would arrive, the phone would ring in our home. Jorge, come, come on over. Jorge, benga, benga, aquí. He liked that my husband would accompany him. I had the fortune and pride to see him study with Segovia. Jorge would go in a moment's notice. So one time Segovia was bathing, he finally opened the door and I said, I'm shaving, play for me, you play the guitar. On the guitar, the action was so stiff that I could never play. Jorge, yes, because he had strong hands. Therefore, the tone that I had that went to fret that guitar. Jorge, yes, because he had strong hands. And I could never play the, I could never fret that guitar, not a chance. From the root of that, I had the luck a morning or two later, the time he was here, 
and he had invited me. We were, for example, in the Plaza Hotel, where Segovia stayed in Buenos Aires, and he was seated in the middle, Jorge to his left and I on the right, seeing him st <coughs> You know, that it was a marvelous thing because I was, in my life, I saw a few scales as such as those with a velocity and a tone without a doubt. It was marvelous. Without a doubt, Segovia was a great guitarist. When he would come, he would always ask us, and Jorge told him, let's see, Andres, tell me, which of all of them, Segovia's student stands out. He always spoke of, Ian Williams, as he said, he was a good Spaniard, didn't say John. You will see, you will see he's going to be a great guitarist. He was a student of his, he loved him dearly. The other day I saw a video of John Williams and he was with Segovia. Hector, how could it be that Segovia had students if he traveled permanently? Courses that he would have. Maria, of course he had in Spain and Italy the 15 to 20 days of courses of perfection, but he also had cases such as John Williams for whom he had a special preference. There were students in which, with which he had affection for because he was soft-hearted, as we all are. Hector, John Williams would already have had a formation of the basic technique and Segovia would give him his final touch. Why didn't he have time to give regular lessons? Maria, look, it could have taken place as happened to the brother-in-law of Jorge, Celestino Piaggio. That was one of the great Argentine musicians and orchestra director. He even on vacation was being a director. Hector, traveling the world? Maria, when he was in Europe, for example, he was in Romania because the war had taken a foothold. He had to stay there and he studied with a great director there and he followed him, Hector. But John Williams followed Segovia all over, to all, over, all parts of the world? Maria, no, not all over the world, no, no way. But he must have had a formation perhaps, I don't know. In this video I saw the other day, he wanted to play the guitar since he was very young. He also had a great affection for Segovia because the maestro was quite occupied by him, possibly in that epoch when Segovia was making his tours of Europe. It wouldn't have been strange that John Williams would travel to receive lessons from him. Why? I remember that he would always speak to us of John Williams and Julian Bream who studied with him. Now I think his perspective of affection was more for John Williams though he did speak to us of Julian Bream. Did I tell you John Williams recorded Nortania? Hector, yes. Maria, he played a little bit with the ideas Segovia added to it. Segovia added his, always added his touch. Whatever way, John Williams' version is good. It's not a favor that it's in there, but they think that it deserves to be inserted in their discs. In this moment, among the great guitarists that, are, that there are, finds John Williams the most mentioned. Justly Villadango, Villadango's gave me the data showing that he's the most mentioned. Hector, yes, he is the most often mentioned. The public in those epics that went to the concerts were the guitarists or from all of society. Maria, I want to believe that they were an eclectic public that they all couldn't have been guitarists. I played in a hall if it were filled. I would suppose that it would be the public dilettante of music and that they liked the guitar. Hector, and why did the majority of guitarists play in the Salon La Argentina? What did that hall have? Why did they play there? Maria. I had my first concert there. Possibly it must have had good acoustics, I think so, because I was only 18 when I gave my first concert presented by Consuelo Maya Lopez. I suspect it must have had good acoustics, I really can't say. After I played in the Teatro La Salle, because it had good acoustics in there, we had been societies such as Amigos de la Musica that held concerts there. 
and I played in the Teatro Cervantes, other locations as well. I also played with the quartet in different places and in the interior of the country. Hector, fine. With that, I will leave you free. I expect to transcribe this and distribute this through various forms. Thank you very much. Maria, Erminia, Antola. Thanks. Here's a photo from 1959 of Maria Erminia Antola de Gomez Crespo. And that is from the magazine of the Asociación Guitarística Argentina, Noticiero Guitarístico, News of the Guitarist World. And I have a short bio here of her husband, Jorge F. Gomez Crespo, is a contemporary amateur guitarist residing in Buenos Aires, being occupied with a lot of work. He found out how to apportion his youth with his esteemed instrument, the guitar. He is a player of total delicateness with accented musical criteria, impressing into his versions a refined diction that reminds us of the classics of the instrument. He employs his in plucking uh, un algo de uña, that's a little bit of nail, with tact and mastery that produces a pleasant sound. He avoids showy variations, exempt at times of musicality for delivering a pure and continued sentimentalism. His periodic performances on radio are appreciated you can observe the manner in which he develops his versions, and it is the most apt for radio transmission. The performances across this medium make worthy of the beautiful instrument his success and noun. So ends the entry from the Dicionario de Guitaristas y Guitareros by Domingo Pratt, published in 1934. It's the Dictionary of Guitarists and Guitar Makers. Here's a uh, picture of an early piece of music. This was published in 1936, Aires Nacionales Argentinos, Argentine National Airs, translated to English. They were published by Record, uh, G. Ricordi in 1936. I'm going to read uh, March, 19, uh, March 31st, 1941, Buenos Aires, uh, review of the film. We looked at a photo of this a while ago where Maria Erminia Antola was playing guitar and, and dressed in a form of uh, as if it was 1835 Buenos Aires. This is from the Revista de la Guitarra, official organ of the Asociación Guitarística Argentina. This is Magazine of the Guitar, Guitar Magazine. Buenos Aires, a film documentary that will debut in the next season. It's auspicious since the whole point of view is for the guitar, to see it reflected on the national cinema and be performed by one of our finest players of the guitaristic art. For the art, its result, its extreme flattery, that it is the first Argentine film in color to have had the occasion for the guitar to be included, and it was represented as it is by one such as Maria Erminia Antola. It's certainly deserving of praise, the step taken by this film company to take into account our national instrument, by itself forgotten in other artistic manifestations where, with a good standard, it would be proper to be dedicated to it, as well as a place distinguished by its possibilities a scene that evokes of a romantic past in a mark of excellent manner, the gentle and gracious uh, melody of a Gaillard that recalls an era, records with characters of dreaming in the spirit, the grace of its gyrations and arpeggios. It isn't the historical case here of the grandeur of the guitar making professorial of erudition, but yes, to record how grand the passion of its culture. When it is plucked with love, sang in its chords of the divinity, of its sweetness, and of the fastidiousness 
of its music, of the richness of its harmonies and the tenderness united that flows in its box to vibrate its strings that draws in and subdues one. So this is a photo from the magazine article showing Maria Erminia Antola playing guitar in an 1835 period setting in Buenos Aires, the epic of Esteban Massini, who was the first guitarist to uh, have a music store, and uh, he is the one that came in 1822. It started uh, the uh, modern guitar schools of Argentina. To continue reading that article, the encouraging factor for the Argentine guitar is without a doubt the conquest of the cinema screen by our instrument and moreover when it was the implicit character as an artistic ambassador that will be accredited before all the public that might see and hear played by the expert hands of Maria Erminia Antola and Flattery. I repeat because it is the first time in a film to see a figure in such a prominent place that has to be the virtue of encountering in the entertainment world new horizons, more admirers, and better diffusion. It is comforting stimulus for the guitarists that see a new stream for that, for the art that they cultivate and that is so Compania Argentina de Películas en Color, C-A-P-E-C, Argentine Color Film Company, has known how to value with a high standard the exquisiteness of its melodies, has to find in other similar ones the same understanding without eluding the commercial side, taking the pure art in the uh, to the seventh art. Among the Argentine guitarists, great value stand that which will honor the film material and with those convictions that emanate full of responsibility that make it mother institution of the Argentine guitar. By its elements, expect that an elevated conception of the cinematographic directors have proportioned a new opportunity for which the national instrument might have a place among the many films to produce. With complete security that will result beneficent for the company's producers and if they consider that the guitar being an instrument that doesn't need to be envied by the rest, it is also just to be traditional representative of its music culture be it put in front and to the step of many and so varied artistic expressions. The argumenters have the occasion of presenting works in which the instruments might intervene as an expression of art since exists in the guitaristic scene genuinely said composers of talent, the same ones that perform that put well above the beauties of our guitaristic literature if they prefer the great classics but the case to make work and to have the trying to educate delighting, which is the best art of teaching, trying to overcome, to be separate from the common, to teach, demonstrate the unknown, the cult, and the good, to make a home. It is to demonstrate love for us. It is to care for the conquered, in a word, to be put in relief all which we are capable to produce, what we value. It's from page 14 of Revista de la Guitarra, uh, either number seven or number eight issue from 1941. From issue number 10, I'm gonna read. Um, this is from December of 1942, from the Revista de la Guitarra. Translation, Maria Erminia Antola, the 12th of November, the known guitarist Maria Erminia Antola was presented in the Salon de la Biblioteca de, del Conseo de Mujeres. Works by ancient and modern composers comprised the program of Miss Antola. In the second part, she offered Argentine compositions by the maestros Aguirre, Caba, Lopez Buchado, and Gomez Crespo. Once again, the performer put into evidence prestige gained in her artistic career. Now here's the magazine image. I have over 3,200 images and photos in my four volume book that weighs 21 pounds. 
Thank you. You need to look for the Victor Records uh, recording of Consuelo Maya Lopez and Maria Erminia Antola. It's available on YouTube. It's wonderful duet. <laughs>